very first time I met Jamie Bramwell was in Chester. Um, he came along with Dan Carden from the Labour Party from Walton. Um, Laura Parkins there from Momentum and from the unions, Jamie Brownwell was there. And they spent an afternoon on a Saturday talking to um, about 50 or 60 people about the Labour Party, about where we were going and what we were doing and how we were doing things. Um, a couple of months later, I met Jamie again um, at the Liverpool um, conference, um, which, which was great. I then found out that uh, Jamie is um, um, plays a guitar, does a little bit of singing, likes sharing the stage with Jeremy Corbyn um, and giving songs to, uh, to the rallies and what have you. In fact, Jamie's um, been a, um, a singer in a band for a long time. But the one thing that I remember in the general election of last year um, was Jamie, it, this was on a, a YouTube clip, and it was Jamie in the front of a car listening to a gentleman sat in the back of the car who had a big white beard and his name was um, Mr Tomlinson and he was giving it plenty large he really was and it was great and I, I just kept on looking at Jamie's face and there was this big smile across Jamie's face listening to Rick Tomlinson absolutely brilliant so Jamie you've got a lot to live up live up to having listened to what Mr Tomlinson said about you and from the union, from the NEC between 2015 and 2017, I give you Jamie Bramwell. Thanks very much. Uh, and, and by the way, that uh, that video I, I believe took uh, Mike Ainsbury over the over the line. Uh, um, we were because we only done that. I think it's about by 800 votes. So I, I think that video actually took us across the line. Uh, it, it really. I, it was over a million, a million views on Twitter, which was just fascinating. I actually went down to the. We actually went down to with Ricky. We made Gary, who's the actor who was with, who was working with Ricky. And I've known Ricky before from from doing some union stuff in construction, of course, and the Shrewsbury pickets. Uh, so we went down and, and we'd done this video in the car, drove around the is a state. We didn't even we didn't even actually go around where we were supposed to be in Halton, which was the funny thing. We'd done the video and we were driving around with the speakers in the back of my car, blasting out as if Ricky was in the car. My Facebook kept going down with Ricky Thomas has just been in Murdershaw, Ricky Thomas has just been in Castlefield. He hadn't been, of course. Uh, so it was quite funny. Uh, but after we took him back, he uh when we got back into his house, his wife said to me, can you put the Christmas tree up? And I was like, you, you are. <laughs> she was like, can you put the Christmas tree up? I won't say what she said, but that lazy won't bloody put the Christmas tree up. So they, I, I said, okay, no problem, I'll put it up. He said, I can't do it, I can't do it. It was two pieces, <laughs> a two-piece Christmas tree, and, and, and the lights were already fitted, and you plugged it in. It was a tiny thing, and he just wouldn't do it. So, so I, last year, I got to put Chris, uh, Ricky Tomlinson's Christmas tree, so that just kind of made me laugh thinking about that. Uh, when, I, when I spoke to you, Dave, about put, coming, coming and saying a few words and what, what it is that we could I could talk about, obviously, I was on the NEC from 2015 to 2017, as you've just said, uh, how it come about? I thought I'll have to tell you how, how I came about ending up on the NEC, because that was it was fast. In twenty ten, I went to my first conference uh, through UCAT, and then with the, the construction industry UCAT, uh, and I remember going to conference in Jersey and see my first conference, and I remember seeing and don't forget again, this is twenty ten. I've been a shop student for eighteen years, but never never done to the conference, and I went in twenty ten, and. I couldn't believe the the people there that I was watching getting up so passionately speaking about the industry that I worked in, about helping others from health and safety, uh, to representing people in the workplace, and I, and I thought, well, this is this is for me. This I I I, I feel that, that passion coming about. Anyway, things started to escalate really quickly. I started reading Marx. I started reading the uh, the, the I read the Ragged Trials of Philanthropists first. Then I was into Marx. Uh, I wanted. I was told at that conference that I'm a socialist. Going back to being at school, I wasn't very good at being told what I am and I'm not, uh, and, and what I'm not. So, 
I decided to work that out for myself, hence why I went through the Marx stuff and the uh, Milton Friedman's and all the Chicago School of Economics. I started to read up really quickly. Uh, and as I was involved in the trade union movement, we had weekend schools and then it was linking the labor labor link to the to the unions and what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. And, and things started again, just getting faster and faster. And uh, as I said, I've been a shop steward for 18 years and things just started to really pick pace and I didn't I, I, I didn't even know how I was ending up then ne the next minute I was approached would I put my name forward for the national executive of the Labour Party through UCAT I joined the party of course in, in 2011 would you join would you put your name down for the executive so I had the support of uh, comrades around the country but I also had Steve Rotherham writing into my UCAT uh, executive put my name forward for and I knew Stevie from from uh, weekend schools and stuff like that and, and, and through the union so obviously he put my name forward which, was, which gave a bit of influence and Jim Kennedy who was then at United was at UCAT but he was then at United was our executive member for UCAT who then, when he left and went to work for Unite, he became the executive member for Unite. So there was a gap there. So there was a uh, there was a little there was a place for me to get on from UCAT. And as as we all know, UCAT then merged with Unite. So I was then went from being a UCAT executive member to a Unite executive member within two years. So I, I've served two. So be claimed to fame as I've served two unions on the executive. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I ended up been there pretty quick uh, and I remember my first NEC meeting and it's daunting because obviously I got myself into the politics by then and I was looking at people you know my heroes were well you know the people I looked up to with the Tony Benz the Dennis Skinners even the, you know the Jeremy Corbyn's and, and, and the left and, and, and I knew where my politics were after I'd done that study by, of myself and I'm sat opposite Dennis Skinner and he's looking at me and I'm thinking, that's Dennis Skinner, you know, in my head, that's Dennis Skinner. And, and I didn't know where to look. So it comes to, uh, it comes to break time. So I get up and I, I'm, I'm kind of shuffling over to the, to get a couple of sandwiches. And Dennis comes over, he says, Jamie, you cat. Not you know, didn't come back with my second name. He says, Jamie, you cat. I went, yeah, yeah, Dennis said, come with me, he said. I've got, got to tell you something. So obviously then that was, uh, he, he recognised that I was in uh, on the left and uh, there was obviously uh, politics being played and he was basically taking me under, under his wing and, and saying, get me to obviously think on, on the lines of them, which he didn't have to, of course. Uh, but it was around the time, so the 2015 was the same time, of course, 2015 when I was elected. I only remember being elected at a conference I'm thinking, oh my God, because it, when it comes out at the uh, conference, because it's the union vote, it says, you know, Jamie Brownwell elected with 220,000 votes. And I was like, oh no, what? How, the, how have I got to here? I, don't, I, I was like, this is unbelievable. But then I started thinking, oh, my Facebook, oh, my Twitter, what have I said? <laughs> so, so I, at that dinner time on that day at that conference in Brighton, I was straight back to me, uh, straight back to me hotel, delete me Facebook, delete me. And I've never said anything, but I just all these paranoid things. Like, oh God, what, what you know? What, I was swore, you know. So that was that was a, uh, the same. But obviously, as I said, it was, it was the same time as Jeremy got elected. Uh, well, he obviously got elected just prior to that, and then uh, so it was the twenty fifteen to seventeen. And uh, it was then it was the phone calls, and then I was being part of it was felt I was part of the left, uh, which because I, I it was UCAT, and uh, even though UCAT by the way didn't uh, support Jeremy in the first twenty fifteen, they voted for uh, Andy Burnham, uh, which wasn't my uh, choice, but my executive at the time of UCAT they supported Andy Burnham. Uh, but as time progressed, and uh, obviously I was, I then became uh, with Unite. So, uh, 
things started to get then straight away as usual no because i don't have to you know everything uh, 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 that I, I'll, I'll talk about usual everyone knows what was going on from that, that 2015 onwards the, the the games then being played uh because of jeremy corbett of course and and, and, and where we were going uh and, and that's why i brought the book down by the way dave that is about as accurate as accurate as it gets the candidate by alex nuns it's about as accurate as it gets. When I first read this book, I was like, it's like a diary of, of, of the, it's when it talks about the meetings and what went on and, 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 and in, in my head. I'm like, that's that's like everything that was. There's another book caught by a bloke called Tom Bowers. The uh, I don't even want to tell you because I don't need to buy it or I don't need to read it, but I bought it because my me, me granddad used to say to me, when I used to say to him, why did you buy the Daily Mail? He said, you've got to know what, excuse the language, you've got to know what the bastards are, are, are up to. So I bought this book by the, the, this Bowers bloke and I was on holiday and I'm reading it and I'm swearing because my wife's saying, what are you, my wife says, what are you swearing at? And I was saying, the lying, it's lies. I was there, I was in that meeting. Jeremy Corbyn never once asked, as far as I can recollect, asked for a secret ballot in fact it was I, I made two contributions that day one was that it should be uh, it shouldn't be a secret ballot for the reasons of I represent at the time I represent Unite because uh, we'd made by then uh, I represent Unite and I can't have Unite members me saying I'm not telling you who I, I, I voted for uh, Anne would vouch for that. She, Anne would come and hit me across the back of the head if I wouldn't tell her who I'd voted for. But of course, I was voting where, you, where, you, where, where we were uh, for Jeremy. I mean, you like, but Jeremy Corbyn never. In the book, Tom Bowers says that Jeremy called for a secret, uh, for for an open ballot, and the two and there was two women on there. And, and look, I always got along. With everybody, I always get along with. Regardless of what politics people had, I, I got along with everybody. Once I got round the table, politics changed, and we're having a different day. But you always respect. I always respected the people, and I got I got along, as I said, with with everyone. But there was two people uh, there who were who were upset. But it wasn't because, and they were blaming Jeremy, by the way, in in the book. This bloke is now attaching this to Jeremy as if he made them cry. And I know that never happened. And he writes for the Daily Mail that power, I think it was. I think he'd done a, he'd done a long winded every day, there's a uh, excerpt from his dreaded book about uh, whatever it be. And this was in it. And, and Jeremy never, never once. In fact, Jeremy, I've never seen a man so, uh, so calm, by the way, during that, that eight, nine hour meeting. I've never seen a man so calm, so relaxed. And he, and he and it was and it was as if he was saying what will be will be I'm not gonna and he doesn't he, he he's all known he doesn't offend anybody uh, and he wouldn't offend anybody so it's the type of rubbish that they attach to people that I was starting to see these things on the executive I was starting to see that not just from outside but those inside uh, the executive as I said I was only there for two years I felt when I first got there I was like a rabbit in the headlights just trying to make sure that you know I'm not doing the wrong thing and I'm taking it all in and I'm, I'm responding and being uh, polite as, as I always uh, try to be. And then things, you could start to see these different things unfold and it was, it wasn't nice, it wasn't nice at all. Uh, and then obviously the, the coup came about, uh, when the coup came about, sorry, uh, the resignations, I, I, I remember we, I was, I was in. I don't even show where my last days, but I don't really care to be honest, because there's nothing that it's not, not true. But uh, I was uh, on the uh, selection panels for the Metro Mayors, and I remember sitting in in the uh, interview and, and different people come in, uh, and, I, and I'm not going to say which one, but I remember interviewing one person, and as the let. The, well, I don't have to mention the name, but you'll know as soon as I say it. She was the shadow, she was the shadow health minister, uh, mental health minister, right? And as she walks out of that room and goes off to do whatever she after she'd done her bit, the texts are going, and she she just basically said, "I'm the mental shadow mental health minister." 
went outside and were literally half an hour had resigned from that post. And I thought, I thought at that point, I thought to myself, you've just tried to sell, you, sell, put yourself forward in an interview and then just go outside and do what you did. And I always, again, I always got, I've, I've known uh, that MP for, for many years and I got along with her. In fact, I bought her a birthday card because she worked in the UCAT uh, offices upstairs. And so I, and, and I couldn't believe, I don't know how you could treat people like that. So that, that was when I started to pick up on a lot more things that were going on, which I found, I found wrong, and, and, and that's not how you should treat people whatsoever. And then I, and then I had a, I, I got asked to do a, make a article in, for the Huffington Post. And in the Huffington Post, I, I, I said, I said that how it is. They're a disgrace. These people that were resigning from the party, uh, resigning from the front bench, were a disgrace. One by one, planned every two hours, bang, bang, bang. It's a disgrace. You don't treat, you don't treat yeah, uh, anyone like that. So that started to get me a little bit more not on the on on the the best best of terms with some of them uh, that I wouldn't I wouldn't speak. But anyway. Uh, so on the on, I want to talk about some of the positive things, really. Uh, as I said, then meeting Dennis for the first time. But I, I think I spoke about it last week when we got Dennis up uh, at conference. I, I, I'd nudged Dennis and we had a conversation, and he and it was the first time he'd spoke since 2018. And uh, it was funny; he was going around telling everyone. He told me parents first because I was stood next to his parents, and he told every press at press on the way out. It's a, Point his finger at me. It was his fault. It was his fault. He he made me do it. Uh, but the but the my best memory of Dennis. I'd said to him, I'll come down and I'll meet meet with you in Parliament. And we'll have a cup of tea if you want, Dennis. And he said, Yeah, okay. And so makes me way down. Goes in, goes into Parliament, and he's waving. So he goes into the tea room where all the, the all the different MPs are all sitting. And this a, a, a lot. He, he turns around and he says. I was talking about music and and how I played the mandolin and played guitar, and he says to me, uh, he says, "I bet you didn't know." He said, "I'm the only MP to ever have sang in the Royal Albert Hall," and I was like, "I didn't know that, mate. No." And it's just there's just me and him sat opposite on this table. All the Tories are all sat round the corner there, and he goes, "Yeah." He said, "Have you ever heard the? Have you ever seen the film The King and I, uh, or the the?" the the, the show the king and I and I said oh, no I haven't mate no and he said uh, he said well I changed the lyrics and you can Google this because it's uh, if you Google it you'll find them on on the uh, at the album all singing it he said uh, I changed the words to uh, I see Thatcher and there's nobody there I see Tebbit with his long greasy hair while well, he's singing this dead loud in the <laughs> parliamentary tea room. And I'm just looking around, there's all these different MPs, the Tony MPs looking over, and he's, I'm in bulk, he, he's in bulk. So they're the good memories that I, that, that, uh, that I have uh, from being on that NEC at that time. I just, uh, if I was to, if I was to sum it up, I met some great people uh, who really guided me, gave me, I mean, uh, Andy Fox, who's the chair now, I mean, uh, She's not ever going to get to chair a conference like uh, everyone else has done as a chair, and, and uh, you know we should all be sending that support for, to Andy tomorrow because she served in, in very difficult times. Uh, I met Andy, obviously he was friends with Jenny and Jim and uh, many of them. So fascinating things happened during that time. If, uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, oh, well, even down to selections for uh, uh, Laura Pitt, uh, Laura Smith. Uh, I was looking at standing at we in Weaver Vale, uh, but I had an op. I had a, there was a choice really, and uh, my daughter was not having the, the best of time in school, so I obviously said no. I will. Uh, I've got to stay with my daughter and what have you. Uh, but I wanted to be on the selection panel as well because if you remember the time, it wasn't the CLP selecting; it was the uh, three people from the NEC, which I don't you know. Obviously, I didn't agree with. But what we had to do was make sure there was somebody 
uh, who, who would def support left MPs like Laura. Uh, so I put my hand up to go and, and, and uh, be on that selection panel. I remember, I mean, I've still got it in my, um, in my bag somewhere. I've still got Laura's name in t red tick tick uh, for the people that we 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 uh, we did we got supported on the left. So, yeah, fascinating time. Uh, I miss it for, for be, being in, involved in that because, I, as I said, I work on the motorway, so it's not the most challenging of uh, jobs, and it's not the most... Uh, it doesn't doesn't rattle rattle your head to make you think too much, uh, but yeah, it, it was it was a time that I really enjoyed. Uh, but I, I've, I mean, I, I don't know whether we're allowed we're allowed to speak about other things, and I don't want to say too much because uh, I don't want you uh, your CLP to get into any longer. But I I have submitted uh, to the Ford inquiry uh, what I knew. And, and what I witnessed, and emails that I'd sent in over the behaviour of uh, individuals. So hopefully that will. Yeah, it, I got it. Got accepted that it will be be read. Uh, so hopefully that will be looked at. And I do. I don't do it. I don't do it from a, a, a disingenuous place. I do it from a, a place of honesty. Uh, that's. Or, or I can't. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to make stuff up. And if I seen it and I seen it and I was wrong, then I got and someone told me and I was wrong, then I'd I'd say, oh right, fair enough. I don't believe in just making stuff up, but it was a it was a difficult time uh, to see such a brilliant, honest man with the with. Uh, I mean, there's not many men. I always I always say uh, my dad more than Jeremy that I've ever met who's. Honest, and I'm pretty sure my dad's not really honest, but he's my dad, so I have to take that he's being honest. But he's probably one of the most honest men uh, and nice, nicest people that uh, you could possibly meet. Maybe that was, maybe that was his uh, fall, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I'm I'm happy to take any questions if I can answer them. I will, of course. Right, Jamie, that's fine. Thank you very much for that. Um, I don't mind what you say. All right. Uh, quite happy um, for you to carry on and say what actually happened in these particular meetings and in fact one of the questions we've got here is, is from Anne and she says are there any decisions that the NEC made when you were on it that you are that you particularly remember? Yeah uh, Anne there was I mean the, 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 obviously the, the most of uh, in fact, I messaged Jeremy's lad today on Twitter because he said one of his proudest moments, one of my proudest moments was vote being one of the 18 that that day uh, for keep voting to Jeremy to stay on the ballot paper. But one of my biggest regrets was, again, this way to come. We were, when we went in for that, I've st and I've got all of the uh, the paperwork for that day. In fact, I will just take you back slightly uh, to the Friday before we got told of this meeting on the Tuesday for the, the coup meeting. I had spoken to Ian McNichol and I'd spoken to Paddy Lillis and said, I'm doing a 24-hour football charity match on Tuesday. We've got an NEC meeting the following Tuesday. Is there any chance we can just leave it till next t the Tuesday after? Because people had sponsored me. Tom Watson sponsored me. Keith Faz sponsored me, Ian McNichol sponsored me, a lot of the members of the uh, NEC sponsored me to do this 24 hour at England's training ground. And I'd asked them, if we, uh, look, please, can we? And we knew that there was uh, people on holiday. One person was in Cornwall on holiday, one was in France. So that took three of us straight out the picture. Well, obviously, I knew what was going to happen. So they called the meeting on the Tuesday, of course hoping that three of us who weren't going to vote weren't going to be there. Well, I had to cancel my 24-hour football. I only played, I played 12 hours after that meeting, that famous day. I left there at nine o'clock, got the train to Birmingham, with a taxi from Birmingham to the, train, to the football match, and played 12 hours football right through the night after that for the charity. For the, charity. But the reason why I, I say that is, on the agenda for that paperwork, I asked if I could... Are we done now? Can I leave? Because I've got to get that last train to Birmingham. And that's when they pulled the stunt 
of because because a number of us had left. Jeremy had left, and that's when they called the stunt about raising the uh, the fees for the uh, you know the signing. Uh, the the oh, I forgot the, what's the name of the word. Someone help me, please. The uh, to get you so you could vote. The three pound members. Yeah, and they upped it up to twenty five quid. Was it? They did that after three of us had gone. After three, or, or not just three. I can only count for myself, and I know Jeremy, and I know uh, someone else. When that's three, and and they knew that after that, after we'd gone, they pulled that vote because it wasn't on the agenda. And I still got the paperwork upstairs because I went upstairs and had a look. No one told us about it, and I felt guilty. In fact, I was watching the television the following uh, about two days later, and there was somebody on the news saying that someone had left early to get the last train to go home to Runcorn. Well, that wasn't that was me going to Birmingham because I was going to play this football charity football match. So these are the games, as I said, when things start, you start to see these games being played, and there was pol political games being played, and it was. And I do 100% believe we'd have had a Jeremy Corbyn government now if it wasn't for the games that did that were played. Yeah. Um, question here from um, Andy Price. Andy says that I hear that the new chair of the NEC um, should be the current vice chair, Ian Murray. But some of the NEC are putting forward Margaret Beckett instead, as she is the longest serving member. In line with the old protocol, is this true? And do you think that the unions drew back in or not? I honestly couldn't. I, I'd hope that they'd vote in because it usually went, it, I mean, whatever protocol has been in since I've been in, it went chair and then the vice chair went up and it just followed like that. It, it used to, when I was on it, I remember the arguments around it, you should be man then, a man then a woman and a man then a woman. So it was about alternating and making things fair. As regards to Ian, I know Ian uh, very well. He's a, he'd be a great chair. Uh, but also, I mean, I used to sit next to Margaret Beckett. Uh, I got, in fact, I got stuck between two Becketts at one point. Uh, but I, I'm not. I, I'm not I, I wouldn't be able to say yes, yes or no, and it'd be wrong with me to make any, any, uh, any, uh, make any comments on it. But I know Ian would make a great chair, like. Uh, but sorry, mate, I can't. I can't answer on that. Do I think the unions will back Ian or not? One hundred percent. But, uh, well, depends what union, I guess. Yeah. Right, <laughs> if anybody else wants to ask any questions, if they can put it on the chat, I'll, I'll read them out. Because I don't want to go for a free-for-all because that's rather difficult. But I've got a question here. Oh, it's, uh, it's from Andy Price again. Um, do you think the party is more factional now than when you were on the NEC? Uh with the election, as regards to the party members or as regards to the NEC, uh, Andrew is... I think either, either. All right, well, as, as regards to the membership, I think what, what's going on now with uh, with what he has done is is, is, is create more for faction than, than is necessary. I believe, I've always believed it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's probably a weakness of the left that we're, we're too nice... Uh, and, and we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't attack when we should attack. And not that we should, you know, it, it's just that thing that we don't do because we're, we're nice to each other. Whereas the other side, it, politics is, is, a, it's not, the, it's a nasty place sometimes. And, and, and we are too nice. As regards to the uh, NEC, I think the vote the other day shows how finely it is split still, but I think it's well. It is in the it is in the favour of the right. Uh, just I think the CLP elections that we've just had uh, done us. It was better than what what we we well we had rather it was obviously been a lot better, but uh, uh, yeah. I, listen, there's a right and there's there's a, there's a, there's a right. Side. Uh, there's a, and look, I, I, even as I said to you before, and I go into the NEC meetings outside when we're having a cup of tea and what have you. I could you could speak to people who you knew weren't going to vote with you or in your thing, but it was always nice, always nice to be nice. And when we were in them room, in them rooms, uh, people were just people could be ruthless. Uh, it, it was it was like a they flick a switch. Uh, I always remember. I forgot, I, 
Alan Davis, his name was. He was the Welsh NEC member. And I used to, I, I got to sit next to Alan, and I, as things were going on, he'd talk uh, away, and I, I, I'd chat to him and stuff. And I, I remember Pete Wilson standing up. Uh, well, sorry, Pete Wilson raising his, his usual Pete Wilson, you know, making his point quite loud. I remember Alan Davis saying to me, who's, who, who's he? And I couldn't believe it that, like, Pete Wilson, I thought everybody knew Pete Wilson, but a member of the NEC didn't have a clue who, who Pete Wilson was. And, and, and that, like, total polar opposites politically. Uh, and, and so the fine line would be the, would be the balance. And, and luckily, during the 2015-17, as, as we were on it, we, we just... Well, the votes, votes. We, I think we just had the edge for the for the left, uh, but I just think it's flipped slightly now, and, we, and, and we're just behind. Yeah, a uh, question here from uh, Rafa. Um, from your perspective, Jamie, what needs to change to prevent um, similar situations happening, i.e., party executives acting against the party leader? What needs to change to prevent from similar? Party executives acted against it. I don't think the party executives actually worked against the, the leader, did they? Because didn't I mean they actually? I, I listened to Howard Beckett's uh, video today, which you sent me, Dave, and I think he nails it to the to the fact that they had the discussion uh, on the executive. They were given the information, and the 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 it was proven to be. Uh, that that generally they can't do it, so it's uh, bringing back into the party. So I don't know whether the uh, the exec. I don't think it was the executive acting against the party leader. Are we talking? If we're talking about uh, talking about what you're talking about before the N the NEC members of the NEC um, putting things on which um, they never told you about on the agenda. How can things like that be stopped? Oh, well, and, well, well. And, and that is that is basically the, the the executive in some ways, or the NEC working against uh, the party leader. Well, that well, to be honest with you, I think that wasn't. I don't think that was the executives uh, themselves. That would have been uh, either Ian McNichol or John Stolliday or one of them that pulled that out the bag. The executives themselves may not. Have. They may have done a calculation before and gone. We'll pull that out now. Now that they've all gone, I don't know. That's a, it's like a it's an answer that I probably would never be able to get get hold of because because I wouldn't know because they wouldn't if we'd have still been there. I guess they wouldn't have pulled it out the bag. They'll have watched us walk out and then gone right. We've done the numbers and away we. Uh, uh, I'll throw that one on the table. So it, 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 as the executives are in support of uh, of not having Jeremy on the ballot paper I guess would have uh, would have hung around because they'd have been told that's the way it works they'd have been told there's going to be another vote in a bit just just hold your horses whereas we thought that's the end the way we go you know so now yeah. I, I don't think you can hold all the executives to account uh, but I, I, I wouldn't know that answer. Is, uh, Ruff is saying is there any way to stop this in the future well I don't think you're going to stop it in the future with the current general secretary and uh, the, uh, the 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 strength of the those on the right. So I don't think they'll need to do it in the in the, in the future. Perhaps if I don't know. Uh, I mean, I can't see a rule going in saying uh, that the agenda must be adopted uh, before perhaps the meeting starts and nothing else can get be, can get put on the agenda. I wouldn't wouldn't know how to put that in but it's, it's something it's probably something that we should have learned <laughs> from that one yeah right question here from um, from Vicky um, Jeremy Corbyn is an honest man who wanted to create a new gentler kind of politics um, but there are people who wanted to discount all the past and pretend it does not matter why is it important going forward to know what happened from 2015 to 2019, in your words. And also, um, there's a supplementary question after that, which yeah. I'll come to later. Uh, 
it's important to know what went on in, in, in 20 I mean, hopefully this, uh, there's a, the, the, the fourth inquiry will give us uh, some more information as to what went on. Uh, and, and then it's important to know because if we want, uh, if you want a, a gentler world, if you want to treat people the way you, way you wish to be treated, then we should all adopt and follow that way. There's politics, there's politics, there's a pol political debate to be had regardless of, we, all of us in this room will probably have a different political opinion on on, on pretty much different things. It, it, they're all there about, but we may have a different approach to things. But what we can't, be, can't do is, is the nastiness, and that's why Jeremy, uh, you know, it, it's pointed out he's, he's a, he was an honest man, uh, and he wanted the kind of politics. And in the end, it was the kind of politics that got him in the end. And, and do we adapt to them? And... and fight fire or as they say it's cutthroat or or you know do we do we do that or do we keep ourselves in the same place as we as we always are as, as honest kind caring socialists and 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 it's it's that level of where do you where do you take this now things in in, in i only had two years on there uh, if it had carried on they have had to carry it on, and, and you can understand why things did get a bit more heated, because people were starting to have to do the things that they could do to protect Jeremy Corbyn, to protect those in and around him. Uh, and so, the NEC, why is the NEC right wing? Look, I don't know all of them, so it'd be wrong with me to say who's right wing or not. I'm being told... you. We're, bit, we're all being told that the, the, those on the right, there's more of them on the right. So I don't know them all as individuals. I know some of them. Uh, and I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them, to be honest with you. Uh, but the, what are the union NEC members doing? It's not always... Uh, it's funny because people... You'd, you'd have thought that those on in, in the unions, you'd, you'd automatically think, well, they're in the unions, they must be left. You know, they, it, that's what I when I first was starting going. Oh, they must be left. They must be in unit. They want the rights for workers. They want to, the same things that we do in the workplace. So they must be, uh, you know, anti-racist. They were all working all, all uh, you know, they all work in that same frame. Anti-austerity. Anti -austerity, so they all work in that same frame. But for some reason, it doesn't it doesn't transpire when you get to certain levels within the, within all the trade unions. There's different. Someone, oh, I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's another but, question here from John Featherstone. Um, does the left let itself down by not always showing unity like the right seem to do? Um, you could say that about the Labour Party and the Conservative Party. Um, the left sometimes seem as split as the party is now. What I found, uh, John, is the those on the left are about egos now those that those that there's a lot of not everyone on the left sorry should should let me rephrase that there are those on the left who have huge egos who it's constant it's about who they are it's not about the people they represent uh, i was during the time when uh, when I was on 2050 to 17 in 2017, just a, a couple of months before the elections and when it was who was going to represent the trade unions, uh, I was asked, would I was well, I was asked, you know, you don't do you mind here because because the unions are split up because Unison had so many, GMB had so many, United, United, uh, three, but because I was you, Cat had gone across, I made the four up, right? So other unions were saying, well, why have they got four and why, have, you know, and we want, so in the end, and what I'm rightly so, we wanted the FBU on it, which is Ian Murray, uh, and we wanted As Aslef uh, McWheelan uh, from a union collective to represent all the other, other uh, trade unions. Now, I knew people like Jenny Formby and uh, Jim Kennedy were by far more experienced national executive members than I, and I was, 
it, it wasn't about Jamie Brownwell anyway while I was on there. For me, it was about the left, about about Jeremy, about about uh, the whole picture of uh, to make to make a better better place. That's what I was. I've been got involved in the trade union for to make a better place. And so I was just yeah, no problem. But the problem with you have with the left, as far as what I've seen is. So they all want positions on something, and they all want to champion themselves because they're the best, and and they all want to attend. They, they just they attend the, the the opening of a book. You know they're just there constantly, just want. And, and that's never been for me anything that I've wanted to to be. I, I kind of I love that. I don't get me wrong. It's nice to know that, uh, for instance, I can te- text Jeremy about the footy. You know that's a privilege that I, I I'm happy to have. You know when when Liverpool keep beating Arsenal, of course, uh, but I can have the banter with with them, and that's a little privilege that I've got. Uh, but it's all 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 the all the all of the divisions between the left and 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 you know you're seeing the likes of uh, the the momentums and the CLPDs and what's going on, and, and you just just I'm just like come together. And we'll we'll be a lot in a, a lot better place, but there is a there is divisions on the left. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know who's sitting Jamie, down. I've, I've just found another division on the left with a very good friend of mine. If you read the other comment he's put here, and City. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, you know, um, I, I don't need enemies when I when I've got friends like uh, Andy Price, you know, <laughs> in, in the Labour Party. Um, but no, it. The question I would like to ask you um, is that you, you seemed incredibly busy um, from 2015, 2017. I said that you're singing, all right? Um, I've seen a couple of uh, YouTube and, and on your Facebook um, singing with your daughter um, <laughs> with the guitar. I also um, know about the Ricky Tomlinson thing, but what, what else are you doing, Jamie? Um, you say that you're working on the motorways and what have you. And, it, and it's not exercising your mind much, but are you doing anything? And um, maybe you could answer this as well by explaining why you actually left the party and then and then came back in. Um, do, you, do you find that the party is not giving you the, the stimulation that you need now, and you need to find something different? Uh, so, uh, from what from 2017, I then I got uh, I left there pretty much the, the NEC and ended up. Uh, on the national executive of the of United for construction, so I only come off there last year. I didn't win the election to get back on. Uh, so I, up until last, up until May this year, May this year wasn't it? I think it was May this year. I was busy with uh, executive, but I also represent with Anne on the regional political li- li- liaison committee on the national li- labour liaison committee. I'm on the National, uh, national industrial sector for construction. I'm on the regional industrial sector for construction, and I'm also on the European Federation uh, building woodworkers. So I do a lot of other stuff uh, as well. And I was uh, at the same time I was on the. So I had, uh, I, to be honest, it was juggling. Uh, I was spinning plates, and and it was so the NEC one wasn't too. Well, wasn't one wanted. I wanted to give away because I, as I said, I was passionately enjoyed it, but. There's always, as a, I'm a trade unionist first anyway. Before I'm a Labour Party member, put it that way. Uh, that's 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 where where my roots lie. Uh, so I had enough things to do uh, outside of that. After I come off the NEC, because the album that I've been writing had been, I had put it on delay because I was writing it just before I got elected, and I've been writing for a number of years then. Then I got elected onto the executive. Well, I, I didn't have time or or or, or any. I couldn't think. So to get things right, I was too busy with work, obviously family, all the construction stuff that I do, and the executive. So I, that kind of took a lot. Of, so as soon as twenty seventeen come, I started to put the album down and then into sort of writing it down and recording it and stuff. So I managed to get that done. I think what were we on uh, for twenty? I think it was last year. Was it? Yeah, last year, uh, twenty nineteen September twenty nineteen. I finished the finished. The album, which was a like a monkey, it was like on me back. I, got, I knew it was there, but I couldn't do it. So that took a lot of uh, that that took a lot of my time up now. 
as regards well, that, to... That's really nice that people come on here and, you know, if they want to flog something, you're more than welcome to say it, Jamie, you know. <laughs> give, give us the no. title. <laughs> it's Christmas Cole, Cole, coming. Cole House and the Tomahawk Baby. Listen, there's a thing tomorrow in Parliament. Uh, it's called bro hashtag Broken Record. Uh, and what they're doing is the streaming. So even if you go and stream, if you go and stream my album, you get I, I get 0 0.05 pence for every time you stream it. Right? It's it, it's it's the Apple, Spotify, all you can eat, theft of art artists. So I mean, I. I that's another story, but it's in, out tomorrow. Tom Gray from Gomez. Uh, there's a couple of others here. Uh, the uh, guy Garvey from Elbow. They're giving evidence in Parliament in the uh, committee rooms tomorrow, ten o'clock. I think you can get it online. So it's going to be that's something that I'll be should be tuning in, but I've been work. Uh, so I'll be uh, I'll keep my eye on that and seeing what's going on there. Uh, yeah, I, look, I only do I only play music for for. for because it's a passion. It's not. I, I don't know how people can earn. earn you couldn't earn a living out of it anyway. If it, apparently, you can earn, earn more by selling t-shirts. So, if you, anyone wants to buy a t-shirt, <laughs> <laughs> got another thing here from uh, John Featherstone is uh, uh, Mick Whitley, another blue nose sends his regards. Oh, Mick! You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Mick? Oh, I love Mick Whitley. Yeah, he's brilliant, Mick. Well, if anybody really nice. else got a question to ask, they, they, would, they would like to ask uh, Jamie. Um, if so, um, put your hand up. Probably you want to ask a question, Paul, don't you? I'm, I'm no? Thinking, well, I was thinking al along the lines of why didn't Starmer and Corbyn get together before this mess has landed on the party again. Surely, Starmer, if you, if you, you know, I think he can be a good leader, and he knew that Jeremy's just too honest, and unfortunately, people then can twist things. But Starmer's much better at kind of being aware how people can do that. Why didn't they get together and get a statement that Jeremy could have released after this uh, investigation report into anti-Semitism? That would have just ended the situation we could have moved on i just don't see how these those two couldn't have got together beforehand to avoid what we've ended up with with jeremy actually being kicked out of the party coming back in and now he's not in the mp labor party and who knows what's going to happen there anyway i don't know what your thoughts would be on that i honestly don't think if I, I, well, for certainly Keane wouldn't have, I don't think he would have had the conversation, but I just honestly don't think, I think it was coming regardless. It was being put up, this was all being set up weeks before. Uh, it, it was kind of, I, re, I got up on the morning of the EHRC uh, when it was being released and I read the report because uh, obviously, as I said, 2015 to 2016, I was, I was part of this. So I was to see. It's the same with the, the leaked documents. I've had a look. At, uh, I get a, a little mention in one of them. Uh, and because I was in there, I always want to know if it's if it's true and if it's if, if what I, if it's, I re recollect. But so I read the HRC report and I'd actually text, text Jeremy in the morning and said, uh, have a good day, brother, you know, uh, Solidarity, or what have what you? And he come back with, it and, he, and he seemed in a in a boy mood, and 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 because and, and, I don't think, and when I read the, it, yeah, of course there was anti, uh, there's anti Semites in the party. Yeah, no, no one would deny it, and no one did deny it, and it's what Howard says today, uh, it, it, on Sunday with the, with the, this thing, there was no doubt about it. But we used to get these, uh, we used to get these. Compl the the, the uh, complaints, you know, about members, and, and, and so you'd read through them. And I, honest to God, hand on heart, don't recollect, and I'd read them, because some of them were quite fascinating, you know, some of them had a weird in the street, and they were getting thrown out the party for having a pee in the street. Now, okay, we shouldn't go peeing in the street. But are we, I was like, read, I was, I'd read through them, and there wasn't, there wasn't, as 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 many as it was made out, 
but there was some there that needed to be dealt with. And so I agreed with everything that you, I put out on my Facebook, and that's what, sorry, Dave, I should have said before, and that's why I, I resigned from the party, because I, if they can suspend Jeremy for, say, for being honest and saying the right thing as far as I was aware and what I recollect, then they'll have to suspend me. And if they're not going to suspend me because they can't be bothered looking at me Facebook, well, I'll suspend myself. And that was my attitude because I'm a trade unionist, one out, all out, we stick together. I'm not accepting that. And 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 I know I, I was having a, uh, it was during a time where, as I said last week, but I, I lost my name, so I was a bit angry as well. And I was, I'm not happy with this, this is wrong. Because I know what, what a, such a such a nice fella he is and he doesn't deserve all the attacks that he's getting. It, it, it's it's ridiculous. So should Keir have, have met with Jeremy? I think they should have done, but I don't think Jeremy said anything that was wrong either. I, I genuinely don't, and, and I reiterated that. There was one, I was. I know we used to do a quiz after this, Dave. I, I, I set my own little quiz up for you. I was going to ask you to do, uh, I, I wrote it down, but I was laughing. I thought, I'll set your little quiz up. And the que So question one, who was the General Secretary of the Labour Party from 2010 to 2020? Right, provide so I'd ask you to provide the dates. Who was the lab, leader of the Labour Party from 2010 to 2020? Provide the dates, and in order, place them in the longest serving both leader and general secretary. The ERHC report goes back to 2011. The ERHC report says that from 2018 we were finally they were finally getting a grip of it. From 2015, we've just spoke about a coup, about those working behind Jeremy's back to not allow him to get into an election, the constant infighting between them. The, the, in fact, the report, which, which, which uh, I would rightly point out, says it shouldn't be for Lotto to get involved with the General Secretary's report. But because Jeremy was doing it, he was being blamed. He couldn't win, and they wanted them. They wanted it to happen. And that's what he's saying. He was he was trying his best to get it done. He had he was he was dealing with it for, as far as I can say, and then he can throw me out the party for all I care. Right? As far as I'm concerned, you've got the the PLP trying to do Jeremy over, you had the staff trying to do Jeremy over, right? These are all facts, they're all they're all being proven. You've got the two so two of them trying to get get old hold of him. He's trying to sort other stuff out. McNichol has known about it since 2011. Ed Miliband was, was, was the leader from 20, 20, uh, 10 to 2015. I don't remember. I don't remember. Because I, I swear down, once I, when I got onto that executive and, and it started to raise its head about the anti-Semitic stuff, and I was like, what's this? Like, really, what is it? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, where I live, I don't know. Uh, I don't really know any. I don't even. I, I don't ask people what religion they are. Not, I'm not even religious. That's not my my thing. And I couldn't get it into my head. I was thinking, what's going on here? This is this is madness. Jeremy's the nicest person that I've ever met. And going back to Margaret Beckett, by the way, Margaret Beckett said she had a go with Jeremy once at an NEC meeting. She was having a go with Jeremy about his be uh, the behaviour of him and John McDonnell. And I seen Jeremy whisper to uh, oh, Glennis Wilmot, the chair at the time, and he whispered. I see. I'm, I'm, I lip read him, and I said, and I seen him say, uh, "I've never been aggressive to anybody in my life." So I then puts my hand up and says, I'm, "I'm not happy with what Margaret's just said. I've been following Jeremy for a number of years, uh, and I've never seen him or witnessed him." Or hear them say anything aggressive to anybody. So Jeremy says thank you, like so when we comes out, he said, hey, thanks for that. I said, I haven't really. I said, I just lip lip read what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> but because because he was getting attacked for being an Jeremy was getting attacked on the NEC for being an aggressive man. Well, if any of you can tell me or provide me evidence where he's been aggressive, then then I, I, I don't know. You just, it's just not going to happen. See, this is one of the problems which has happened with the Labour Party since Jeremy Corbyn became the leader of the Labour Party in 2015. It, it, it has actually polarised people's positions mm. um, and, and it has become um, quite 
um, toxic even now when Jeremy hasn't been the leader for the last eight months yeah. and, it, and it's just becoming worse and worse and worse and I think there's a lot of people who are um, very upset about what's actually happening um, and I, I know there are people on here who um, can see the other side as well and they say they would like a formal apology from from Jeremy and that would sort it as well um, because there, there are always two sides to every argument. So in that situation, to, to what someone said before, would you think that Jeremy ought to give um, a formal apology, or do you think that would, they would still go after him? I don't think, I don't think it matters what Jeremy says, they're, still, they're going to go after him, but I, 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 don't, I honestly don't think you can apologise for something that you haven't you haven't done wrong i don't i can't for the life of me i've read the report i can't for the life of me understand what he's of course maybe he could say i should i, I would have waited i could have waited a day or whatever but he shouldn't apologize for what he said because he's only said what the report says and the report says which is which is i would better clearly explain in, in his video better than i could possibly do he clearly doesn't say anything uh, that's that's wrong i've heard the, the, listen i could li i could reel off a number of our mps who've said a, a lot worse than what jeremy corbyn is but i'm not going to go down that road because i don't want to throw stones because they they should be investigated themselves but you can investigate jeremy corbyn until you're blue in the face and you won't find anything that he, he's done or said that's anti-semitic and that's the answer that's the that's the reality of it you won't find anything whether 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 people challenge him on what he did during his period, well, that's that can be questioned of anybody. But go off the evidence. Go off how long, as I asked them questions. Go off when he started the, go off when he, when this all started to come out. Go off who tried to do it. And Jenny Formby comes in in twenty March twenty March the twentieth, twenty eighteen. Comes in and does more as a general secretary. In, eight, in, in, in 18 months, a, a year, than Ian McNichol done in, in the other years. Yet, Ian McNichol doesn't even get a mention in the report. What's that about? If that was any of your workplaces, you'd say, oh, God, you're not holding me to account for that. They're the ones that have been not doing that properly. I've only just come in. I'm trying to do it right here. That would be, you know, that's all all you can say in, in, in that report. And so I, I'm a bit, uh, I, I'll stand 100% behind the, uh, an honest man. 100% and I ain't going to, you won't get me TV. And it's not rose tinted glasses because someone once, once asked me a question about the IRA thing with Jeremy, you know, he's a terrorist sympathiser. And I said, do you think I'd be a friend of somebody that was that was a terrorist sympathizer would you i've i, I wouldn't do i couldn't live it i, I wouldn't give up monkeys it was if my own brother was one i'd say no you know what i mean it's not something that, that you know. so it, it, it annoyed me it annoys me oh oh so and i've read not just the candidate not just the other one with the powers i've read the owen jones's recent book and i've read uh i've just read the other book by uh the left out it's called left out by two things the reports are wrong the, the actual books are wrong when i'm sitting there when i'm sitting there and i'm reading them books and i know i was in the hilton pub or you know, the hilton hotel talking to somebody at that time and that person wasn't even there. You know quite well it's telling lies, so they're just lies, and it, 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 I don't think it it won't matter. It doesn't matter, and, I, and, and I'm just glad that Jeremy. Uh, look, he won't. I, I would. Jer, they won't push this. I don't think it'll be too much longer. He won't push Jeremy too far because if he goes down the legal route, he'll win. End of story. He'll win. So they're gonna. They'll, they'll, something will happen in the next week or two. Because they, they can't keep pushing it that way, in my opinion. Well, we'll leave it there, Jane.